Hi guys, Brian the Scary Lion back with another video and well, here's what happened at Fastlane. To put it blunt, a big part of me wants to call this just a completely shit pay-per-view. But, I'd rather call it confusing because a lot of what went on was just really, really fucking confusing. It's literally just ended, so I've set up to record. So let's go through some of the matches and some of the crap that happened. So we start off with the kickoff show, and the match on the kickoff show was Rusev and Shinsuke versus Big E and Xavier Woods from the New Day. Now this match wasn't terrible. It wasn't a terrible match, but it wasn't exactly a good. It was there, and I'm going to say that about a few matches on this card. It was there. It didn't really feel like it accomplished anything. It didn't really feel like. It pushed anything, it was just there. I think the most exciting thing that happened during all of this was Kofi getting a fucking called into the office for a mysterious news about the fucking WWE Championship. We'll come to that. So basically, I this this match happened and uh, the winners of this match were Big E and Xavier Woods who finished it with up, up, down, down. That's basically all I can say, nothing really happened. Now we move on to the main card, and the first match on the main card was The Usos versus Shane and Miz for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. This match was actually alright, like, it was a pretty decent match. Uh, a lot of good spots. The best spot of the match actually has to go to Shane and either Jimmy or Jay. I can't remember which one it was. The Uso was gone for a splash onto The Miz when Shane intercepted in the air. It, that was a really good spot, I enjoyed that. The Usos ended up winning this match, uh, which is really good. I feel like the Usos were the deserving winners here, but we did get to see what we've been waiting to see. Shane turned heel on The Miz. They were doing this thing where they were, they were over talking to Mr. Miz. <laughs> Weird angle. But they were talking to Mr. Miz, and then as they were walking away, Shane just bam takes out the Miz and then grabs like he, he grabs Mr. Miz in like this weird way and then just pushes him. I feel like he should have smacked him. It probably would have added a little bit more, but just that grab was alright, it was enough. But going forward it looks like we might actually get to see Miz versus Shane at WrestleMania. So then we had Asuka versus Mandy Rose for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Again, this is another match that was it was there. Like, nothing really built from it. Asuka ended up winning. Of course she did. Did anybody really expect Mandy to win this? But it was another match that was just there. Mandy ended up losing because Sonya had, like, picked up the ring covering to try to get a weapon or something like that. And Mandy slipped on the ring covering. I mean, it would have made sense if we saw some sort of turn. But, no, it... I don't know. It just it just felt stupid. Like, it was a match. It was just there. So at this point, we finally get to see what was going on with Kofi Kingston. And backstage, Kofi goes into Vince's office with the other two members of the New Day who ask for a triple threat and they get told they're getting a triple threat for the WWE Championship. And it was happening there and then. So Kofi is told to go out to the ring and wait for it. But then we get told that that match isn't going ahead. Instead, it's going to be a handicap match, two-on-one with both members of the other team in the ring at the same time. So Kofi was getting put up against the bar. I know, stupid, didn't need to happen. I guess it pushes a little bit more for Kofi at WrestleMania, but I, I, I honestly don't see the point in it. It just seemed like a stupid little bit to put in. Uh, the bar obviously ended up walking away with a victory, but... Just a stupid, confusing, silly moment that didn't even need to be there. Next up, we got the Raw Tag Team Championship match between The Revival, Ricochet and Alistair Black, and Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. This was a match, again, right up until the end. The last few minutes of the match actually did start to feel pretty good. You got to see a lot more, but for most of the match, it just felt like it was a typically thrown together Raw match. It's the best way to describe it. 
The Revival ended up walking away with the victory after hitting Shatter Machine on Chad Gable. And then after the match we got to see a little bit of confrontation between the tag teams and we had Alistair Black and Ricochet standing tall after all of this. I thought it was really good, it shows that the new guys who are coming up are still getting the recognition while keeping the Revival as the champions. The match itself just felt a little bit too forced and thrown together. I realised that Bobby Roode and Chad Gable were probably only really in this match to save Alistair Black and Ricochet. This point was made to me by Thomas. But, aye, it's one of them. To save them the defeat, they threw in Gable and Roode. So next up, we saw a change on the card. Originally, this match was supposed to be Andrade versus Rey Mysterio. But after a backstage confrontation, it ended up being turned into Rey Mysterio versus Andrade versus R Truth versus Samoa Joe for the United States Championship. The same match that we got on SmackDown. Now, unfortunately, I, I missed that SmackDown. I know, I know, wrestling fan missing a show, it's bad. But I did miss that SmackDown. But my brother pointed out a fact to me that during this match, a lot of it felt repetitive of what we actually saw on SmackDown. Is that right? But that's to take nothing away from it. It was a really good match. Uh, apparently the match on SmackDown was really good. I need to go back and watch it. But, aye, the, the match was really good. It was the first one of the night that I truly got invested in. Because all of the men in this match looked really, really decent and put on a really good night of action, to be honest. Not only that, I think they went the right way by having Samoa Joe pick up the victory. And he picked it up with a Kokina clutch. Perfect. Just for a moment, I am going to let Thomas cheer in the background because this is Samoa Joe getting a victory at a pay-per-view. Woo! <laughs> the first real win at a pay-per-view. <laughs> he has been so excited about Joe getting the win at a pay-per-view. But aye, uh, Joe ended up picking up the win against Rey Mysterio. So, aye, a nice victory and a nice match right here. So after this, it was a Women's Tag Team Championship match between the Boston Hog Connection and Nia Jax and Tamina. Uh. <laughs> this, this match was really boring and very, very sloppy. Very, very, very sloppy in Nia and Tamina's hands. Really, the amount they botched was just incredible. I think they've hit no records for botching. Obviously, you know who won this match. The, like, this full pay-per-view has been so predictable. But, hey, Sasha and Bailey won. I don't think anybody predicted otherwise. I wish I could say the saving grace was what happened after the match. But even that just felt forced and stupid. Basically, Tamina and Nia attacked Beth Phoenix, who was on commentary. After they've just twatted the Boston Hug Connection, who have just won. Then Natalia runs up, and then they take out Natalia as well. Um, I mean, okay, fair enough. But the ones who are being made to look big in this are the two who have just botched a fucking match in epic fucking style. This, in my opinion, was the worst match on the card, literally because those two fucked it up so badly. Now we're on to the WWE Championship match, and this was the match of the night for me. This was Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens. Then we found out that it was turned into a triple threat. They were keeping the triple threat here, and Mustafa Ali was added in. All three men in this match were fucking brilliant. Each hit, each bump, everything was fucking brilliant in this. The one thing that started holding it back was the fans throughout the whole match just chanting Go Fi, Go Fi, Go Fi. And I get why the fans were doing it, but it started to pull away from a really, really fucking good match. Now, it was Daniel Bryan who picked up the victory in this, pinning Mustafa Ali, after Mustafa Ali showed a lot of heart and a lot of fight back coming back into this. Uh, we saw Rowan trying to get involved here and there, uh, we saw a little bit of teamwork from Kevin Owens and Mustafa Ali taking out Rowan. Like, it was really good. Even Rowan getting involved in this. Rowan played a big part in making this match really good as well. So, I, I am so happy with this match. It, it is literally the match of the night for me. 
Your match of the night? Uh, His match of the night as well. Now we move on to a big disappointment. This was Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch, and if Becky wins, she gets to go on to WrestleMania. Now the match started out really, really well. I feel like having Charlotte playing on the fact that uh, Becky was injured, having a teaser and having a play about with her a lot, that was really good. Becky's comebacks, taking uh, Charlotte quite a bit, really good. The big problem with this match was the running. Don't get me wrong, I feel like a run-in was brilliant. Having Ronda running in to cause the disqualification and still get Becky to get to WrestleMania, I feel like that's the way everything should have went. But it wasn't executed well. Ronda came out, hits Becky, and then just stuns there. And then the ref's like, all right, disqualification, Becky wins. And then she just leaves without doing anything else, really. And then Charlotte's all angry about it, looking like she's going to kick fuck it to Becky. And then she leaves and doesn't do anything about it. Confusing. Executed poorly. I mean, I get what you were doing, and it's a really good idea, but hmm, you fucked up. You fucked up with that. You could have done it so much better. Now we move on to the final match of the night. This was The Shield against what I've recently heard being called Three Man Bland. Apparently somebody on Twitter came up with this. I fucking love that name, Three Man Bland. Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, and Bobby Lashley. Surprisingly enough, this match I was expecting to be okay. I wasn't expecting what we got. The match was really, really good. A lot of great action from everyone involved. Even Baron Corbin, who as of late hasn't been doing that well. Baron Corbin actually looks alright in this match. Having the pack mentality gone both ways in this, really, really well done. I feel like them trying to do the triple power bomb that well, the Shield have solidified as their tag move, as their big thing. I feel like having them trying to do it to the Shield, ni nice little touch. One of the big things I am going to say here is, Thomas, did you enjoy this match? Yes. Thomas, do you realise Bobby Lashley was in a match that you enjoyed? He did fuck all during the match. <laughs> Bobby Lashley was involved in a match that Thomas enjoyed. Oh, that's just made my night. It don't fuck all in the match, so it wasn't really involved, was it? <laughs> See, even in a match that he likes, if Bobby Lashley's involved, he will still find a way to fucking complain. Towards the end, we actually got to see a curb stomp on the table by Seth Rollins onto Bobby Lashley, taking Bobby Lashley out. We got to see a triple power bomb from The Shield onto uh, Drew McIntyre through the, through the other announcer's table. So, I fucking love that. And then we really got to see the pack mentality when they surround the ring and climb up surrounding Corbin, who just looks fucking terrified. Beautiful, beautiful moment. So the match actually finished with a triple power bomb onto Baron Corbin, and obviously they had to have Roman picking up the cover. But this match was brilliant, and the final scene to see the three men standing holding out the fists. It was really nice considering this is the last time we're going to get to see the shield together unless this is all a work way Dean Ambrose. Uh, I'm not too convinced we'll have to go for we'll have to see what happens going forward but aye uh, that's Fastlane. It was a pretty shit pay-per-view. I am not gonna lie. The, the matches that were really really good Unfortunately, could not save it from being a really crap pay-per-view. Which is a shame. It is a real shame. I enjoyed... I enjoyed quite a bit in this. But the shite that was just shite was just overwhelming. It was overwhelmingly shite and ruined the whole fucking thing. When it comes to the punishments, it is going to be Tom going through with it. Would you like to let them know who it cost you? Oh, it was Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens cost him. So basically, he's going to be doing the tomato soup shower. We're probably going to do it on Wednesday. Bye. I hope you liked this video. And if you did like it, but fuck that like button. Please.